Okay. Easy move over. <laughs> right. Um, so the last piece of grammar in this lesson, maybe there's one more little piece, is about conditional sentences in which um, instead of having the word if as the introducing the condition, um, you have a relative pronoun. Um, and these, this is a conditional syntax is very widespread in ancient Greek. Um, and, and so, you know, those three types of conditions, the future, future conditions, the uh, or the vivid conditions, the general conditions, and the contrafactual ones, um, they, that, that syntax works in more situations than one would think. So there are uh, conditional sentences, in, even in English, in which you use a relative clause. Um, and I'll give you an example on the, on the blackboard there. If anyone likes peas, they will like potatoes. There's if. Um, notice the word anyone. So it's, it's mainly sentences in which you can use anyone that you can that you switch to a relative. Whoever likes peas will take potatoes. Okay, is a conditional sentence. I don't think we're necessarily used to thinking of it that way, but from the point of view of Greek, it sure is a conditional sentence. Mm -hmm. um, we're also going to learn later on that you can have uh, conjunctions like when that function like if. So when someone likes peas, they will like potatoes. That certainly looks a lot like an if clause, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so we can see uh, and feel the, 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 the similarity between these three things. Uh, an if clause condition, which is, looks, it looks like the basic form to us, then one in which instead of if you have a relative pronoun like who, it can be whoever, whomever, um, whichever, all of those things, okay? And generally, uh, the, the, what we're recommending is what the book recommends, that you, you think of it as a relative pronoun that can be generalized, okay? Um, then, then uh, um, you'll be you'll be okay. So the first point on this board uh, on this screen is the key thing that we're not learning any new syntax. It's only about the way in which the if clause is con is introduced. That is, there's no a or a on. Instead, you have a form of the relative pronoun has he ha with or without on. Where you have on, you have the on added on as a separate mm -hmm. word uh, next to the hoss. Um, so the syntax rules are exactly the same. And um, again, what we think is that you can translate the relative pronoun itself. Okay, this is the, probably the most effective way of doing it is to translate the relative pronoun in these conditions with whoever, whomever, whichever. Mm -hmm. um, you. We're also going to see that for some of them, you need to actually translate the relative pronoun as anyone or someone, whatever works, mm -hmm. um, and, and introduce the word if. We'll, we'll come back to this example. Um, but, but just from this notion that the whoever, the whomever are the best ways of translating them, you, you might expect, and your expectation will be met, that generally the largest number of relative conditional sentences, conditional sentences whose if clauses are relative clauses instead of using the word for if, are general conditions, present and past general. Okay, experience teaches both Felicia and me that that's the case, right? Um, but they, the others are definitely possible and you will come across them. So we're going to give you some examples. Um, the first set of examples is present general conditions and past general. Um, what we've got is has on, that's the relative pronoun has in the nominative singular masculine with an on after it. So it's, um, this is the equivalent of a plus on, okay? Do ra pempe, pempe being the third person singular of the present subjunctive, okay? So that's going to mean whoever sends gifts, or if you want, if anyone sends gifts, okay? Notice we're replacing the the relative with anyone as the subject of the sentence because has is a nominative form, right? Mm -hmm. And then paideotai, he is being educated, okay? So the shorter version is whoever sends gifts is educated, or if anyone sends or is sending gifts, he is being educated, okay? The past general version, just the past version, we change the pronouns around so you don't get fixed expectations that the relative pronouns are always going to be nominative, okay? Um, you can do hey, that's the dative singular, any woman to whom gifts were sent, 
okay, or to whichever wo woman gifts were sent, she was educated, right. okay. Um, or if gifts were sent to any woman, she was educated, right? Another way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Lastly, um, there is the least common of these. Uh, the contra oh no, next we're going to do the the vivid ones. Yeah. Okay, we got the future more and the future less vivid one. So here's our example: Han on that's the relative pronoun in the accusative singular masculine with hostrategos, the word for general in the nominative, and kelewai, kelewai, the third person singular of the present subjunctive of the verb to order, kelewo. And then the, the conclusion of the condition is taxatoi, the future middle of tato, which means he or she will take their position, okay? His, his or her position. So um, to translate the whole thing, whomever the general orders, Okay, again, we're trying to use this generalizing form of the relative. Mm -hmm. Or if the general orders anyone, doxatai, he will take his position. In this case, it's masculine because we used Han, or you could use. All right, and then the future less vivid, um, just the, the one that uses the optative in the equivalent of the if clause, the relative clause in this case, and on mm -hmm. in the optative in the conclusion. So. This, we've got our masculine uh, accusative singular, whomever, anyone whom the general orders, should order rather, would take his or her position. Okay. Um, and you can also translate that as an if clause with an any, any pronoun. So if the general should order anyone, he or he would take his position. Okay? Mm -hmm. Um, lastly, there's the contrafactual ones, um, the, the, which are the rarest of my way of thinking anyway uh, of these. So we're using the example from the book, han a pempomen este neson. You've got the imperfect of the verb pempo in a contrafactual condition. And then epidewata an, um, the imperfect with an in the conclusion. So this, I don't think there's a way you can really translate this with whomever. What we've done is the if version. If we were sending anyone into the island, if you do it as a, as a whomever clause, it's hard to get the contrafactual nature into the English. So if we were sending anyone into the island, he would be educated. And the past contrafactual with eris substituted for the imperfects, a pempsamen instead of a pempamen, and epidelte eris passive instead of epidelta, if we had sent anyone into the island, he would have been educated. Okay, so syntax is the same. The only thing we're doing is not using a word that means the word a or an, and you have relative pronouns in their various forms, and it's still conditional syntax according to the rules that you've already learned. Okay.